Hey guys, welcome back. Fred here, AF Math and Engineering. We're going to do a video for you on a Calculus 1 topic uh, and a high school topic, uh, depending on you know what you do in high school, what you cover. This is on uh, limit of piecewise functions. So piecewise function is where we have uh, a single function, but it's uh, defined as two, two separate functions on different intervals. Okay, so uh, for the first question, we have um, when x is greater than 4, we have uh, our, our main function defined as the root of x minus 4. And to the left of x, we have 8 minus 2x, okay? So um, I'm kind of assuming by this point that you know how to evaluate limits. If you haven't, um, I'm going to post a video on how to evaluate limits that we did down below. So I'm going to skip some of the basics, all right? So let's take a look at the first one. We'll take a look at how to evaluate some different types of piecewise functions and what they ask. So uh, in the first question, like I, said, I already stated what the functions are, and the, and the question asks us to determine whether the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x exists, okay? So all we're going to do here is, as we can notice, okay, um, and as we can see, 4 is in, kind of in between both of the functions. So essentially what this is asking for us to do is, it's asking us if the function is continuous at, at the value 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the limit from the left, and we're going to take the limit from the right, and if they equal, then we know that that limit exists. So both functions are approaching that value. So um, we're just going to take the limit um, on the uh, of the upper function here uh, as it approaches 4. So we're going to say that um, the limit as x approaches 4 okay, of root x minus 4 is simply, we're just going to go ahead, plug in 4. Okay, So we have 4 minus 4, which is equal to 0. Okay, and if you take a look at the screen now, um, I've plotted just the two uh, functions there, just so you can kind of take a look at what we're doing while we do it, because it's helpful to take a look at these functions. They're hard to visualize. On the right, this red function, this uh, square root function, that is x mi root x minus 4. Okay, so uh, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to evaluate the limit uh, from the left side. So we're going to evaluate 8 minus 2x. Okay, so that was from the right, and this one is from the left. Okay. And the limit from the left of 8 minus 2x. And the reason why we're doing it from the left is because uh, for x less than 4, okay, which is to the left of 4, the negative side, uh, it, the function is defined as 8 minus 2x. Okay, so we're going to go from the left and we're going to approach 4. And then when we did this one, we're approaching it from the right because x is when x is greater than 4, this is the function. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and apply this now. So we have we're going to plug in the 4 here. So we have 8 minus 2, 4, and that's equal to 0. Okay, so since the limit from the right side and the left side are equal, they're both equal to 0, okay, we can say that the limit exists. Okay, simple as that. And if you'll take a look up on the screen, the left function, the blue one, is our 8 minus 2x, okay? And as you can see, that as they both approach uh, x equals 4, um, they, they approach the same value. x is equals 4, y equal to 0 for both functions, and that's why this limit exists. Let's take a look at the second one. So this one's a little bit longer. It's also, um, it's pretty straightforward, but um, there's, this is going to give you a little bit of an idea of um, when they don't ask you necessarily to compute the limit in between two functions, but you have a piecewise function. So, um, so we're going to let f of x equal, we have these three functions here, uh, root negative x, 3 minus x, and x minus 3 squared. And they ask us to evaluate each limit, see if it exists. So let's check limit one, okay? So uh, we have limit as x approaches zero from the right side of f of x. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our intervals here, okay? And we're gonna look for which function satisfies if, when we're approaching zero from the right-hand side, okay? So if we go to the first function, okay, we see that when x is less than zero, so when we're to the left of x equals zero, okay, we have this function here. But we're, consi we, uh, we're interested in from the right side. So when values are greater than zero and headed towards zero, so from right to left. So in that case, we need to head to the second function here, which is three minus x, okay? Because we're kind of like somewhere over here and we're going towards zero. Okay, so um, now we're going to evaluate this limit to see if it exists for from zero to the right side. So limit as x approaches zero from the right of three minus x, okay? That's just simply 3 minus 0, which is equal to 3, okay? So this limit exists. So as long as we get a value, okay, um, that, that means it exists. So it's not infinity, it's not undefined, anything like that. Let's take a look at question 2. So question 2 is when we're uh, heading to x from the left of 0. So what that means is now what we, define, what we described before with the first function, that's actually what we want. Because when x is less than 0, 
Okay, and if, if it helps, you can even draw a number line kind of and take a look if you're kind of confused by this, this concept, because I know it can be tricky. Like, say you have a number line here. You have one, two, three, negative one, negative two, right? So this is zero. So if we're at the right side of zero, okay, and we're going towards zero, that's from the right. So this is positive. If we're to the left of zero, so when x is less than zero, okay, we're going towards zero from the left, that's from the left, negative. Okay, so that's kind of what that concept means. So let's take a look at the top one then, since we cleared that up. This is the limit, the piecewise function that we need to evaluate here. So the limit as x approaches zero from the left of root negative x. Okay, we're just gonna plug in zero here, and obviously root zero is equal to zero. So zero is fine, that means that the limit exists. Perfect, let's take a look at question three. Okay, so now three is asking us to, not from the right or from the left, but if this function exists at x equals zero. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to go to the intersection point of these two functions. So we need to check if these functions um, have the same limit. And if they do, then the limit at, as x equals approaches zero, the function is continuous at that point. If not, then uh, the limit does not exist. So let's take a look at um, zero, x approaches zero, and we're gonna take it from the left. Okay, that's this function here. Okay, so we have the limit as, we're gonna check from the left and the right. Okay, so of x approaches, and remember x is less than zero for this, zero from the left. Okay, so that's gonna be simply zero. And for the function here, uh, as we approach from the right, okay, we're just gonna plug in zero. And we already did that up here. We get that this limit is equal to three. Okay, so since three is not equal to zero, okay, this does not exist uh, for, for the limit x approaches zero, okay? So does not exist. And if you take a look at the screen here, I plotted it. And if you go over to x equals zero on the left side, the red function is negative root x. And the right function here, the blue one, that is three minus x. And as you can see at x equals zero, this function is discontinuous here. There, the limit, the functions are both approaching different values and of y and as a result, limit does not exist. So let's take a look at question four. Okay, we have the limit as x approaches three from the left, okay, f of x, okay? So as x approaches three from the left, okay, so we're gonna take a look at, um, we're not gonna look at x minus three squared because that's when x is greater than three, so that would be us coming at x from the right, from uh, the right of three. So we wanna go from the left of three, right? So we wanna approach from when x is less than three and go towards it, which is the middle function here. We're going to plug in uh, our three for the middle function here, and we're gonna get that this is equal to zero, so the limit exists. Perfect. Let's take a look at question five. Now, uh, same thing, I'm not gonna write it out this time, we're just gonna do the last two quickly. And x is gonna come from the right, okay? So uh, this one, when x is greater than three, this is the function, we wanna head from the right of three towards it. So we're gonna plug in three here, okay? So we're going to get that three minus, plug in three here, squared, okay? That's equal to zero. The limit exists, okay, because we got a value. And finally, we're asked to evaluate, not from the right or left, but both from, from x, uh, as x approaches three of this function f of x. As we can see, we have two places here where we have different functions at x equals three, so we need to check both. So um, we just did that here, actually. For the top one, we had x equals zero. This is, the limit is simply zero. And for x minus three squared, the limit is zero. And since zero is equal to zero, okay, that means that these two functions approach each other uh, when x is equal to three from the, both the left and the right, and that means that the function exists. So take a look at the screen. Okay, uh, the left blue one, that is three minus x, and then the right green one, the function, that's x minus three squared. And as you can see, as they approach x equals three, the, uh, the functions uh, arrive at, at a value of y equals zero. So that means that the, the limit exists at that point, so at x equals three. All right, so that's pretty much it, guys. I hope that helped. Um, you know, I just tried to fit in as many uh, examples as possible so we could cover all grounds. If you have any questions on this topic or if you want to see more calculus videos, let me know. Thanks for watching, guys.